Thanks for continuing to watch this episode of Answer a Call. I'm Pastor Chuck Reese, your show host and executive producer. This is a series all about evangelism and discipleship, and we're highlighting ministries that are serious about doing just that. We're so excited to be in Casper, Wyoming, visiting Vision Beyond Borders. With me is the founder and executive director, Pat Klein. Pat, thank you so much for spending some time with us. Good to see you, Pastor Chuck. Yeah, so you guys have been bringing the Word of God into Asia for quite a while. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about how God put it on your heart to launch this ministry? Yeah, about uh, 1986, actually 1984, I actually went on the mission field. I lived in Israel for six months. And I came back and I went to Bible school in Texas. And when I was there, I actually went on an outreach to Southeast Asia. And one of the things we did, we carried Bibles from Hong Kong into China. Wow. And I remember I was so nervous and I was just dripping with sweat and I got caught at the border. I still had some Bibles underneath my clothes and then I had to go in the bathroom and repack all the, all the Bibles. Yeah. And I'm dripping with sweat. I'm nervous, but I'm like, Lord, I think this is what I'm created to do. Yeah. And I just love carrying Bibles to God's people around the world. Yeah. It's all about answering a call. And every once in a while you get this overwhelming feeling like this is what I was made to do. Yes. Amen. So uh, what do you tell people when they start sensing that? Well, you know, go with it, you know, trust the Lord and, and step out in faith. And, and when God, when he confirms to your heart that you're doing the right thing, just keep pressing into the Lord and keep spending time with Jesus and just say, Lord, I want to be used by you. Yeah, that's good. So every ministry has a vision statement, a mission statement. What's the heartbeat around here? Ours is to help fulfill the Great Commission by meeting the physical and spiritual needs of God's people around the world. And so that's what we're trying to do is get Bibles to people, but we also uh, send in medical supplies, clothing, uh, whatever they need. We just say, we're here to serve you. We want to work together as the body of Christ and help each other. Yeah. And you know, that really paves the way for evangelism. I think, uh, mm, you yes. know, there's lots of different approaches to that, but talk about that. How's the Lord using this ministry to share the gospel? Well, for one thing, we've been sending a lot of containers into Northern Iraq and also into Jordan and Lebanon. And what's happening is people are seeing the brutality of ISIS and then they see the compassion of Christians and they've, they've actually said, can you come to our villages, bring supplies for us, but bring us Bibles. We want to know about Jesus. Yeah. So it's opening the door for the gospel, but all over the world, we just go to with a heart to serve. We just say, we want to help you. What do you need? And so, but most of all, the biggest request is we need Bibles. And so yeah. we just get to them, get them to them in their language and just try to help them all we can. That's interesting. You know, we take that for granted here. I think there's six and a half billion Bibles published and printed, and some houses have three, four, or five copies, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but around the world, there's some place that are just really starving for the Word of God. Yeah. One lady I know here in town, she said that she had 29 Bibles in her house. Wow. And, you know, that's kind of hard for me to struggle with because here's people around the world that don't even have one Bible. Right. And here we have 20, 30 Bibles in our house, you know. Yeah. And, and so a couple of years ago, I wanted to buy a new Bible. And I thought, do I really need to buy another one? I have like four or five in my house. Right. And I thought, Lord, I'm like, yeah, I can't do it. But yeah. <laughs> I try to give my Bibles away when I'm traveling, when I'm sharing the gospel with people. And yeah. people are open. And I just say, here, take my Bible, you know. Yeah. And it's, but it's, it's kind of interesting because when you don't have your Bible, mm -hmm. when you give it away and you don't have the Bible you're used to, yeah. it's like you really miss the Word of God. Yeah, I mean, we put notes in it. We underline it. Mm -hmm. We highlight some stuff. I mean, some cultures, they think like it's such a sacred book that they can't, mm -hmm. you know, put it mm -hmm. on the ground or they, mm -hmm. you know, they don't write in it. But, right. uh, you know, we encourage people taking notes in your yes, Bible, underline yes. the good stuff that speaks to you, right? Exactly. Yeah. And that's why the people have asked us, that, can you bring us the printed page? Right. We want the Bible in printed form so they can cross-reference, so they can mark things. Yeah. And, and it becomes their own Bible. So the people who really study the Word of God, they say, right. bring us the printed page. Yeah, that's awesome. So when we talk about discipleship, uh, how are you guys making disciples? How are people growing? What we do is we come alongside the churches and we help the pastors. And it's so like in Cuba, we have about 200 pastors being supported every month. We bring money down to those pastors. But we also bring teams in and we go visit the pastors. Uh, we spend time praying with them and encouraging them. And then we also spend time with the church, the congregation if possible, and really encourage them to keep walking with Jesus and to stay faithful to the Lord. Yeah. 
Well, that's amazing. We do the show because we hope folks get a hunch or a burden when they see ministries doing it uh, mm -hmm. all week long, all year long, that they can see their part in it. So how can Christians get involved and support a ministry like Vision Beyond Borders? Well, first of all, please pray for us. Um, we are going into communist and Muslim countries, uh, really restricted areas, uh, going into remote areas with the gospel. So please pray for us. It's dangerous. And, uh, you know, there's a lot, there is a lot of opposition. Mm -hmm. um, but pray for us. We also have opportunities where people can come along on a trip with us. We need people to come with us, to travel with us, help us carry Bibles in. You get to meet the contacts, hear their stories. And then also if people want to help support the ministry financially, that's always a blessing. We really appreciate that because yeah. we're always buying Bibles and trying to get more supplies to the field yeah. to help people. Yeah, pray, give, go. And talking Amen. about going, uh, again, people bringing Bibles in, that's, that's, that's a call, you know, to bring mm -hmm. the Word of God, mm -hmm. right? Yes. You know, but there's, to me, there's no greater joy than giving somebody the Bible in their own language. Yeah. What greater gift can we give them than the Word of God in their own language? You know, we, we believe we need to share the gospel with people, but then also follow it up by giving them a Bible in their own language. And it's just life-changing. When you yeah. see how grateful people are to get a Bible mm -hmm. in countries around the world, it's, it's just, it does something for you. And it's like you want to keep getting more Bibles to more people. And, yeah. you know, um, for years I've carried them into China. Uh, meeting pastors and give them a bag full of Bibles and they break down and start to cry. They're so wow. grateful to get a load of Bibles to take back to their congregation. And I knew of a couple of pastors I met in China had spent over 20 years in prison for their faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah. And I asked one pastor, uh, he was in prison with Watchman Nee and Wang Ming Dao. And I said, Pastor, how can we as a church in America help the Chinese church? He said, first of all, please pray for us. We have a lot of persecution. A lot of our leaders are in prison. He said, but we're now 9% Christian. The government can't stop us now. But he said, second of all, bring us Bibles. We're desperate for Bibles. Wow. When an 89-year-old man who has yeah. spent 22 years in prison says, yeah. I need a Bible, he Bibles. It's like, yes, sir, when and where do you want them? Yeah, you exactly. So. That's good. So why do you do what you do, Pat? Why do I do what I do is because I love the Word of God. You know, after I got saved at the age of 18, it's like the Word of God came alive to me, and I couldn't, I couldn't get enough of the Word of God. And I'm so grateful to have God's Word in my own language and have access to it. Amen. But I just started traveling around the world, and I started seeing people that need Bibles. Right. And they said, please bring us Bibles. We're desperate for Bibles. And, and that's why I go and do what we do is to help the church. And we want to see God's church become stronger and stronger, but also to reach more and more people with the gospel. And, yeah. and so I, I'm blessed to be able to go and, and to be able to help meet the needs of our brothers and sisters around the world. That's good. Final question, is there anything else the Lord put on your heart to share with us today? You know, um, I just want to encourage people, you know, believers around the world, they see persecution different than we do in America. You know, in America, we want to run from persecution. We want to avoid it at all costs. But the, the church around the world that's persecuted, they're not praying to get out of the suffering. They're praying that they would be strong in the face of the opposition. And faithful. Yeah. And they say, you know, please pray for us that we would be strong yeah. and that we will not deny the faith, but that we'll stand strong for Jesus. And that was, that's really what encourages me. And I think it encourages people in, around the world to know that our brothers and sisters are not wanting to get away from the persecution, but they're yeah. praying that they would be strong. And I think that's what the Apostle Paul said, is that pray for me that I would boldly proclaim the gospel and not be ashamed of Jesus. And so that's what we want to be. And, and that's what I'm encouraged every time I meet the believers around the world. I'm encouraged to be strong in my faith and not to back, back down, not to compromise the word of God, but to stand strong for Jesus. Amen. That's a good word. Good word. Stay tuned. We're going to get some more interviews from some folks that have partnered with Vision Beyond Borders so you too can answer the call and get involved.